Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another climbing the rating ladder video. I'm playing Loki 1100 opening with E4. Uh, okay, so I had a request for an Alakine's defense recently. I put out a community post on YouTube asking what openings you guys are interested in seeing. And I'm going to try to work in these suggestions into my games, both climbing the rating ladder and at the standard time control as well. So yeah, had some uh, upvoted... Um, Comments about the Alakine's defense, Al Jochen's defense. So let's go for it. Let's see what happens here. So we're drawing the white pawns forward. Yep, this is all standard so far. Knight f3, this is one of the more solid lines. I'm going to play bishop g4 here, just getting the bishop outside the chain. You can also play g6. You can even take on e5. I'm going to try to play this harmoniously, where I make sure that I have this bishop outside the chain before I play e6. Maybe I'm biased because I play a lot of systems like that where I prefer to get the bishop out. But to me, this seems lo most logical. Okay. So, yeah, mid-1300s rated opponent. This is a, a 10 plus 5 game, so a little bit of an increment. Okay, bishop c4. Now, this is instructive. If I were to move the knight, I would get hit by bishop takes f7. All right, you always got to watch bishop takes f7 check in every opening. It tends to be more lethal in e-pawn openings, but there's plenty of bishop takes f7s that happen in d-pawn openings as well. Point being that after king takes f7, white has knight g5 check, followed by queen takes g4, picking up my bishop. White will have won a pawn in that transaction, and my, my king situation is wrecked too. So I'm not going to move this knight. I'm thinking about c6 or e6. I could maybe consider taking on e5, but I kind of like keeping the, the tension there for the time being. So let's go ahead and play e6. This seems consistent. Yes, I did change up the board theme, by the way. You know, you got to get a match. Uh, Finn's fashion tips there, right? <laughs> you got to make sure your outfit matches the board. I want to say welcome to all the new players, by the way, if you're finding my channel for the first time uh, or if you're new to chess, period. Uh, welcome. I've been playing chess for over 25 years now. and uh, as if you're watching this, you're, you can probably agree with this. This is a fantastic game. It is a timeless game. There is so much to learn here, and it's such a fulfilling game too. Uh, you will never run out of new things to discover. If you play chess, yeah, it's frustrating at times. You may even go through periods in your life where you don't play for a while. That's common. I mean, that's, that's even happened to me, um, maybe for like months at a time, not years necessarily, but uh, just know that this game will always be there for you. And, uh, and we're, we're glad to have you in the chess community. Hope you stick around. Okay, so bishop b3. This is interesting. White withdraws the bishop. Looking for c4, I would assume. Okay, so in the Alakine's defense, you are hoping to draw those pawns forward and then attack them. So taking also knight c6. Both these moves seem pretty logical to me. I'm kind of leaning towards taking. I think I will play that because... I don't want to give white another opportunity to capture on d6. I think I can develop pretty freely here. Put pressure on e5. So I'm threatening knight takes e5, or bishop takes f3, and then knight takes e5. I like the look of this situation. I don't think white has to panic. There are moves that deal with this, like bishop a4, looking to pin me. But my development seems pretty good here. This looks like a target. So I'm happy thus far. Maybe I can think what I'm going to do against bishop a4. Perhaps I simply develop bishop e7 and then castle. That would make sense. By the way, if white plays bishop g5 here, I might have bishop takes f3, removing the defender of the bishop. So this would be an attack on my queen. I don't necessarily have to move the queen or block. We would look at bishop takes f3, and in, in fact, I think bishop takes f3 is going to be strong but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, I got to assume white's going to play a good move here, like bishop a4. I mean, White will have moved the bishop multiple times already within the first eight moves, but as of now, that looks like the best move to me. If white plays c4, by the way, I think knight b4 should be very good for me because that d3 square becomes kind of tender. I may be able to use that to my advantage. Okay, yeah, and well played by white. They do play bishop to a4. Now, I could essentially win the bishop pair if I want by playing knight b6 here. 
attacking that bishop. Let's say queen takes d8 check, rook takes d8, bishop takes c6, pawn takes c6. In some ways, that seems helpful, but I also feel like there's a good chance white will take this knight anyways, especially after I castle. So maybe I should simply play this bishop e7 move I was alluding to and go from there. Bishop c5 is another consideration. I can't win this pawn anymore, not that I see at least. So bishop e7, bishop c5, knight b6, maybe a6. Mm. A6, I think bishop takes c6 will be played. These are all moves I'm looking at. Queen d7, perhaps, if I want to try to avoid pawn structure damage, but I don't like walking further into a pin here. So that moves a little unappealing for that reason. Yeah, knight b6, I'm kind of coming around to that move. It is a forcing move. Queen takes d8, rook takes d8. Bishop takes c6, pawn takes c6. I do think the e-pawn is going to remain weak for the time being. I have the bishop pair there. Maybe white can throw in b3 somewhere to keep me a little restricted. But yeah, I'm kind of coming around to that because I like my development in that case. I think I'm going to play it. I've already been spending some time. Bishop e7, I wasn't sure about h3, uh, h3 bishop h5, and then uh, g4 perhaps. Maybe I'll show that after the game. Okay, so white very quickly... Trades on c6 and castles. I think that's logical. So here I was thinking take and then knight c4. Okay, knight c4. Might force white to play rook e1. And I wonder if white has some slight issues defending. Defending e5 and b2. Rook e1, uh, let's say castle, something like that. Eh, I guess they're... There's maybe knight bd2 towards the end of that variation. I could also play something like queen d5 here. It might be interesting. It does invite knight c3, but I was thinking if I could take on f3 in a slightly different way. Maybe this is my Scandinavian instincts kicking in. Since I love that opening. Yeah, I think I want to get the queens off the board. So take, take. Uh, knight c4. What if rook d4? Because there are two undefended pieces there. I can take f3. Rook takes c4. Bishop d5, maybe. Bit of a weird sequence there. I'm not sure about that one. Maybe I should play bishop e7 at this stage. Yeah, why be so concerned about queen e2? You know, and also with queen takes d8, I know I'm kind of bouncing around here. But it occurs to me that I should consider this move order. Give up my bishop pair, though, and there's f4. I'm not sure I like that so much. Yeah, let's just go with bishop e7. Bring the bishop into the game. Get ready to castle. Try to trade queens on my own terms. I think that was good that white did not leap at the opportunity to trade queens. Because my rook would have entered the fray. And I have the same dilemma. Like, if I take white's queen, then their rook gets to come over there. So I think well played by white. I think white's playing uh, a good game here. So knight bd2. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, castles makes a lot of sense. Maybe the queen d5 move I was alluding to, but probably castles. I have a feeling white's going to fee and keto this bishop now. Let's try to speed up a little bit because I have been burning some time. Yep, h3. Okay. All right, interesting option here with bishop f5, if I don't want to keep the pin anymore, but instead pivot towards attacking this. You know, I think I like that, because I wonder if the c2 pawn is going to be a bit of a liability for white. I don't see a whole lot of value to the pin anymore. It's a mild annoyance for white, but yeah, let's pull the bishop here. Try to target c2. So if white's going to complete their development, I do think this b3, bishop b2 plan is one of the more logical ones. I'm thinking how I, and there we go, yeah, b3. I'm thinking how I can respond to that. Maybe it's time to actually push some of my queenside pawns. It also crosses my mind maybe to play f6. Sorry, Ben Feingold, but f6 could make sense in some cases. I do think here, though, it weakens my position a little too much. 
So I'm thinking a5, a4, or perhaps c5, c4, even as a pawn sacrifice. Uh, let's go with the a pawn push. So yeah, I have double isolated c pawns and an isolated a pawn, but that doesn't mean we can't use them offensively. So I'm going to tell white, hey, I may very well push a4, especially if you play bishop b2, and then I can kind of bother your bishop. We saw that in a recent game. So white puts a stop to that, but that does give me this square to work with now because I can't be bothered by the a pawn. I'm also thinking maybe here and bringing the knight into c3 or b4 could be a strong plan. So if I play bishop b4, I think bishop b2 will be the answer. But knight here seems pretty logical. The only thing I'm wondering is if knight c4 is a concern. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like I have enough play in that instance against the c2 pawn. So I'm definitely leaning towards that right now. And let's play it. And I'm getting a little low on the clock. Uh, my opponent is managing their clock better than I am. So I need to bring more pieces into the game and try to throw them on the clock. Try to make them think. So knight d5. And bishop b2 played. Okay, so this would be consistent now. There's also this one if I want to try to get into c3. But let's, let's play knight b4. And I would predict that rook c1 will be the answer, because what else would white realistically do? If you move the c pawn, I think I'm very happy because I get knight d3 in. So I think rook c1 will be played. I could bother white with knight a2. Maybe just repeat the position to try to establish dominance. Not a bad idea. I might actually do that because I don't see a downside. Knight a2, make that rook move from c1, whether it's to b1 or a1, and then pop it back out. Because people do weird stuff when you, you offer to repeat the positions. Um, sometimes they just won't agree to that. They don't want to draw. They want to keep the game going and they may play a much inferior move. So I think I'm going to use the old Soviet advice, uh, from the Soviet chess school, which said, if you can repeat, you always repeat. So that's my plan on Rook C1. I don't really see too many other good moves because again, I'm not that worried about the C pawn moving. I mean, maybe white can play C4, but that structure is weak. My knight, my knight will be permanently ensconced on b4 if I want. I can think about moves like bishop c2 there. So yeah, I think rook c1 is about the only move. If knight c4, at minimum, I can trade on d1 and take with my bishop. And I think the a pawn is safe enough. So I'm trying to spend my brain power here looking at rook c1, knight a2, rook a1, knight b4, rook back to c1, and then deciding what I'm going to do from that point. I'm thinking the queen d5 move could be useful. Okay, white plays knight d4. Again, not a move I had on my radar. That's an interesting one, though. I see the point. So it defends here and attacks here and here. Yeah, very interesting. So bishop g6 was my first instinct, but maybe then white plays c3. And that could get funky because knight d3, knight takes c6. Okay. Um... Bishop g6, c3. What if I play c5? c5, white takes on b4, I take on d4. That kind of feels like the way I should go. That opens the position. I'm honestly uns uncertain about the complications there, but I'm not too happy about this and this. So I'm going to play this, and we'll see if white plays c3 or not. But yeah, I'm thinking c3, c5, counterattack, and our tactical antennae, and 10 us and 10 and 10 I have to be up because uh, we're getting into a counterattack situation, like an in-between move sequence. Instead of they attack me and I move away to safety, they attack me and I attack them back uh, on an unrelated piece. And that can plunge the game into complications easily. Even just that that little attacking sequence, asymmetric attacks going on. So I didn't go through a full calculation there. I did a quick one. C takes B4, C takes D4, but I saw that if B takes A5 at that point, I have Rook takes A5, and I am on this. I'm on the pawn on E5. If Knight C4, I saw that I could play Rook D5, and I kind of just trusted that the position, position opening up 
should not be worse for me. But that would be interesting because I get a past D pawn in that line and white has a past A pawn. Could happen. Mainly though, I'm hoping that white slows down a little bit because I want to try to make this a little more even on the clock. Okay, knight f3. Hmm. Yeah, so that wasn't too much of a concern because now it looks like I can play this c5 move. I can also take on c2 perhaps, although then white takes here. Mm hmm tricky, tricky. Okay, so I think c5 should be played. c5, knight b5, knight takes c2. We got to go for that, right? I don't think there's too much else to look at here. Okay, there's also this move. There's also that one. Yeah, I don't like that as much, though, for some reason. So c5, knight b5. Yeah, I think bishop takes c2 there at minimum. So let's play this. I have 2 minutes, 21 seconds left. Remember, we do have that 5-second increment, but getting, getting low on the clock. And I think white will realize at this point that this pawn is a goner. So I'm curious what white will do if they will try to counterattack. I think that would make things, oh, I was about to say potentially worse, but c3, knight d3, there is this knight c6 move. So c3 here may actually be similar to the other line I was mentioning, but okay, white does play this. Yeah, now which way to take? I'm thinking bishop takes c2 here to hit the queen. I, I don't think I'm going to shed a tear over my uh, pawn on c7. Because I can just take with my... F8 rook, yeah, let's play this. So queen takes d8, rook f takes d8, knight takes c7, I can simply move my rook away, and I'm happy to go after that pawn on b3 after white attends to their knight. So we've deployed, bishop takes d3. There's various things white has to dodge here, like if queen e2, there's bishop d3 skewering. Did I say I deployed bishop d3 or bishop takes c2? I can't even remember, but I meant bishop takes c2 for the record. Uh, maybe white will play queen c1, but I think I'll still play this. Okay, and white plays queen e2, so I do think bishop d3 is good here. Wins the exchange. Anything else worth considering? I don't think so. Yeah, let's go for the exchange. Okay, yeah, and white resigns. Bit of an early resignation, but I understand. Let's tell him thanks for the game. Yeah, you know, knight d4 caught me off guard. I didn't see this move. It might be a good move. I think the key test of knight d4, bishop g6, is whether white can play c3. So I wonder if Loki was looking at that move. I wonder, I wonder, because I was not sure. I would have to go c5 there, because if I don't play c5 and I move my knight, I think I'm agreeing to lose the c6 pawn. Uh, for example, c3, knight d3... Knight takes c6. Or actually, maybe I miscalculated. Uh, yeah, so c3, c5, knight d3, knight c6. For some reason, I thought white had knight takes e7, but actually they would be down a piece there. Maybe, maybe that is actually playable. c3, c5. Or, or sorry, c3, knight d3, attacking the bishop first. And if knight takes c6, taking here. Oh, no, no, okay, because... Yeah, queen c1. If queen c1 at that point, if then I play queen d7, there's knight takes e7, queen takes e7, um, and then they can scoop my knight. That's kind of confusing, but yeah. Maybe white got scared by those complications. I don't know, but I, I do think that's the critical test of bishop g6, is if the play goes in this way. Either c5 or knight d3. This one I'm not sure about. Even now, in thinking about it, I'm not sure. Here, knight d3. Maybe this works out. Actually, this just might be good, because same thing. If knight takes e7, queen takes e7. Knight takes d8, I take here. Threatening to take this. If knight c6, there's knight e2 check. Probably a very important move. And then I can move this bishop to safety. And I don't think this knight's going to get trapped. Has ways out. 
Okay, so maybe I don't actually have to rely on c5 in this position. Knight d3 might be sufficient, but we will check that. Uh, we'll check the opening database for a second, too, just to see the, the various branches here. Um, yeah, overall, I think white played okay, like bishop b3, bishop a5. I don't know about bishop b3 itself, but bishop a4 was a good idea. Uh, and doubling up my pawns. I have the bishops as compensation for the pawn structure damage here. I do like this a5, a4 plan. Probably somewhere around here, white can play the position better. Wasn't quite sure what I was going to do against rook c1. Defending c2, that looks like the most solid move by far. Um, tentatively, my plan was to do this and this, but if white wants to repeat the position, they can. But I would have done that just to gain a little bit of time and make white th think again. But then the question would be how to play from here. Maybe this queen d5 move, looking for rook d8. It is still a little uncomfortable for white when it comes to the c2 pawn because white would love to play their queen out so they can get their rook into the action and coordinate, but that drops c2. Okay, let's take a peek at the game review here. We'll see what kind of bill of health we get. All right, so 83.1 accuracy for my opponent, 94.5 for me. Let's click into the moves, turn off the feedback. I do not, do not like those arrows and stuff. I find it distracting to my thought process, even when re reviewing the game. Yeah. Okay, so Alakine's Defense, named after uh, the former world champion, Alexander Alakine. And I know there are various pronunciations of his name. I'm kind of saying it uh, the way that I grew up saying it. But uh, you can, if you want to, Google and uh, look for the correct pronunciation. It's a little closer to like Al Jochen, as far as I understand. But please don't... Uh, Lambast me in the comments if you're a stickler about pronunciation, which a surprising amount of people are in the chess world. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm never intentionally trying to mispronounce someone's name, but some people really take offense in the comments when, when you don't pronounce something uh, quite correctly. We're all doing our best here. Okay, so knight d5, d4, and then d6. So this is typical undermining. By the way, on knight f6, white can play knight c3 if you're like a Vienna player. Uh, this might appeal to you because often black will play e5. I also tend to play d5 if I ever find myself in this position. This is a, an invitation to a Scandinavian. There's also lines like e5, d4 that are popular as well. Yeah, you can see this Alakine's defense Scandinavian variation. Some trades that are possible there. So knight c3 is solid, defends the pawn. Uh, so e5, knight d5. So again, the whole idea is to draw white's pawns forward and try to attack them later, right? Like we're kind of lying in wait as black in this opening on occasion, especially if white continues to grab space. And we're hoping to prove that those pawns can be weak, especially the e5 pawn, start chipping away at it. So d4, I play d6. Yeah, and one of the more theoretically challenging lines is if white plays c4 here, knight b6, and then f4, four pawns attack. Intimidating variation. Um, we can click into the opening book here. You guys can see all the games that have been played. Let me shrink my webcam here. Yeah, so there's lines like D takes E5, F takes E5, Knight C6. And if Knight F3, I think the idea is Bishop G4 pinning. You can see laying siege to the center. This time we're attacking the D4 pawn. Uh, hence, white often plays Bishop E3. And then I think black plays Bishop F5. And then tries to continue with e6, bishop e7, castles. Sometimes black will play f6 in the middle game. This is just one of the more important theoretical battlegrounds in this opening. And if you play this opening as black, you, you can't be too concerned about your lack of space, especially with the pawns. You have to understand that your uh, minor pieces and maybe some selective pawn play later are going to do the counterattacking. We don't want to allow white to sit with the center forever. We will do some counterattacking, but we can't panic for the moment and start uh, trying to lash out too much. Oh, also, it's possible for, for black to get their knights um, entirely tangled. So a line you sometimes see here, if I flip this around for a second. So let's say on d4, black actually plays knight c6 before d6. Well, white can start chasing, right? c4. And if knight b6, white can go d5. I think I analyzed this on chessable, actually. So d5 hit this knight. 
If knight takes e5, c5. Okay, white has made all pawn moves so far in the first six moves. And where's this knight going to go? It's running out of squares. This is covered by the queen. This is also covered by the queen. No other squares to go to, so it's only this one. Yeah, and here I think there's a couple good moves. White can play queen d4 or f4. Looks like there's two games in the database. Um, I believe on chessable, I examined uh, this variation in this free course I have on uh, opening traps. And this is the one I think I recommend or look at, queen d4. And you can just see that these knights are caught without any real support. If black wants to defend the knight on c4, because white is threatening bishop takes c4, they have to play b5. But you can take en passant and attack the knight again. I think b3 is also good here. Similar idea. Black's going to lose something. So not good. So black does need a little bit of pawn play. That's where that d6 move comes in. But if you play the white side of this opening, it's quite possible you'll face knight c6 at some point. So remember this little sequence here. You can start chasing down their knights and... They quickly proved to be unsupported. So kind of a, a role reversal, actually, in this opening compared to what Black hopes for. So anyways, flipping this back around, I played the d6 move, and you can see the array of options White has here. There's that c4 move I mentioned. Sometimes they play bishop c4, take on d6. Black can often take back either way. Yeah, I don't know that there's a clear preference here. Both moves have been played quite a bit. I'd say C takes D6 is going to be a little more dynamic, right? Because black has the two center pawns against one, whereas E takes D6 is a little more symmetric, agreeing to play with just D pawns. But I do think knight F3 is the best line for white. Yeah, and here too, you can see the branches. So I played bishop G4. That actually is the most popular move. I didn't know that. Uh, I did know that these were the three major options, bishop G4, g6, and also d takes e5. Uh, of these options, I don't really have enough experience in this opening from the black side to say, but I, I kind of think g6 is the most Alakine's defense-like move. Fiend kettoing the bishop and not getting rid of any of the tension in the center, refusing to liquidate anything. So that can lead to very interesting play. Uh, that might be a future topic for Another video, just how to consider these positions for either color. But I went with the bishop g4 move. And white played bishop c4, which the engine does not like. Okay, so usually bishop e2 is played. And then e6, c6, another split here. Maybe we can just click through a few moves. Yeah, bishop e7, c4. This looks kind of like the game, right? The knight is driven back here. Knight c3, castles. Bishop e3. Sometimes this pressure on c4 will be annoying. Like black may like to play bishop takes f3 and then try to take on a c4, right? But in this case, it doesn't work because a bishop takes b7. But that is a theme you should be aware of. Black trying to use this pin and also the pressure on c4 to their advantage. Okay, so yeah, some possibilities here. And I do this a lot, by the way, when I'm trying to learn an opening, trying to understand what's going on. I like just clicking through some of the main lines. Yeah, D5 here. This is another common move that at some point black may play. C5. Okay, yeah, and now bishop takes F3. This looks familiar. Because I think if bishop takes, black will play the knight into C4 here. Even though they're not winning a pawn, the white bishop is blocked. And black attacks here and here. Interesting. Bishop C1 and then probably an undermining move. B6. Black starts attacking that pawn structure. So... Again, this position might look super cramped, but I would imagine black's still on pretty firm, firm footing here. Yeah, advantage for white, but by no means clear. Actually, not even that substantial of an advantage. So, because if white tries to defend this b4, you get hit with a5, and this is like quintessential uh, strategy when you when you feel your opponent's pawns are overextended, you start hammering the base of the chain if you can. And the fact that white cannot play a3 here because of a takes b4 with the pin, the rook would hang, right? If white recaptures, that's pretty huge. So just an example of how these pawns can actually start to become weak. And black playing in compact fashion can take advantage if white's not careful. Okay, so that all flows from bishop e2, but in the game, white played bishop c4. Remember, we're not going to move this knight. You've got to watch out for bishop takes f7. 
If you picked up one tactical thing from this opening, this happened pretty early on. Um, bishop takes f7. Not even in this opening, just in general. Like if that move is ever possible in a position, especially if there's an undefended bishop on g4, watch out because it's remarkable how often this occurs in games and also how often it's missed by both players. But yeah, this move comes with check and then white scoops the bishop. Winning position for white up a pawn and terrible king situation for black. Remember, black can't castle anymore. So we're going to defend the knight instead of moving the knight. Looks like D takes E5 is the engine recommendation here. This might play kind of like the game, you know, like this. I preferred E6. I think C6 also playable. I think there are uh, some games from here. Yeah, it's pretty close. It looks like C6 is mildly more popular, but plenty of games with E6. Uh, and now white played bishop b3. I guess the idea is to try to go c4, but that did seem a little premature. Are we still following any games here? Okay, so at this point, we are officially out of book. I like to note that. So castles, h3. Yeah, but I would bet castles kind of plays similar to the game. C6 here, interesting. This looks a lot like a Scandinavian or a Carol Khan, maybe. Knight d7, we got these pawns on e6, c6. I mean, you guys know me, I'd be comfortable in this structure, having played a lot of Scandinavian. Interesting. I would have thought knight c6, but I guess sometimes they're putting the pawn on c6. Okay, so anyways, white prefers the bishop b3 move. Let's throw the computer back on here. So take, take, knight c6. It kind of dings me on that move, gives me a dubious mark. But I don't know. I don't know how much to read into that. I think it depends on the depth of the engine that it's using for this auto analysis and how long it's given to think. Yeah, now bishop a4, I did think that was a good idea. Maybe I didn't respond in the best way, knight b6. I was already, already starting to use a fair amount of time starting with this move. Okay, knight b6 appears to be fine. There's other moves though. Knight e7, backward knight move. I didn't really consider that. That's interesting. Trying to keep my structure together. Uh, queen d7, I did mention. I was a little hesitant to put another piece in the pin here. Looks counterintuitive. But okay, this leads to an interesting situation. So take c6, takes. And I think white was absolutely correct not to take my queen. This may not be a huge deal, but I do get to trade on my own terms and take the file in the process. I was envisioning lines like this. Don't even know if this works out per se, but uh, let's say I play my knight up here and white responds with rook e1. I can play bishop takes f3, g takes f3, and then knight takes e5. Right? Because if rook takes e5, I have rook d1 check. I'm going to regain the bishop, and I have a dominating position because white can't even get their knight out due to the pin here. So I was hoping for some situation like that. Again, I'm not even sure that this works because there's moves like knight bd2 if we get here. It seems to be okay for white. But uh, I do think it was tougher for white to avoid the queen trade. So white castles. Yeah, and here I didn't trade queens, but the engine is recommending it. It's so close, though. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's hard to know how much to read into this. Uh, we are looking at Stockfish 11, so it's not quite the newest version. Okay, I can't, can't say queen takes d1 followed by rook g8 was on my radar. You know, slap the handcuffs on me. If I play that, uh, you can fully accuse me of being stockfish. Rook g8 in this position. <laughs> Shout out to the analysis gang, by the way. Those of you who stick around for the analysis. I really appreciate that and hope you're learning a lot. So, I, I mean, this moves above my pay grade, guys. I'm, I'm just an IM. That might be a GM move. Maybe super GM move. <laughs> I don't know. We'd have to play out some variations to discern that one. I don't, I don't think the idea is g5 necessarily. So funny move there. Bishop takes f3, I can understand. Yeah, it's giving, um, interestingly, I saw this line click across the screen. This is all if queen takes d1. It's here if takes, then rook g8 makes a lot of sense, right? Because we're going we're gonna to win the bishop. Okay, so maybe g5, like kind of a thrust in order to try to Try to isolate this e pawn, right? Maybe I can attack it with this, knight c4. If f4, we can take. We can capture that defender. 
Yeah, so bishop e7 may be the first questionable decision on my part. I do think there was more to rook t uh, queen takes d1, rook takes d1 than I gave the position credit for. I kind of stopped looking like here. Yeah, stuff like this didn't appeal to me. And I think I mentioned this line too. I felt like well, I could simply play f4 here, and I kind of stopped looking at this variation, but there, there are probably other possibilities. Okay, so bishop e7. White could play queen e2. That would be interesting at this point, keeping the queens on board, preparing for the rook to come over. Queen d5 does look like a pretty good reply, so it's possible I would have played that. White played knight bd2. Still wants me to consider queen d5. Yeah, interesting. I just castled. Seems fine. h3. And now I didn't see bishop h5 being as annoying as bishop f5 hitting the c2 pawn, so that's why I preferred that move. That seems to be the right call. Okay, b3. I mean, so far so solid for white. They haven't dropped anything. They're nearly able to complete their development. They're, they're very close to that. Bishop b2 on the way. I was looking at my pawn structure and thinking, let's try to put these kind of ugly pawns to work, right? a5, a4. Let's try to either trade or hint at the a3 move. And I think c5 is also valid because c4 could even be played as a pawn sacrifice in some cases. Let's say bishop b2, c4. Um, looks like the engine doesn't like it immediately, but in the future, let's just say white takes with the pawn. Now white has the double isolated pawns. Maybe I start getting some play. Bishops opened up. So I played a5. Yeah, and it, this is a dilemma for white because they can do what they did in the game, play a4, try to stop me, but they could also play a3, trying to meet a4 with b4. But maybe then I play c5 and I insist on trying to trade something. Um, they could just develop, but it, it's annoying, like having this pawn hanging over your head. If it gets all the way down to a4, you saw that in my last standard video where I ran my h-pawn. In the Sicilian against that 2500 player. So I don't know if that's the answer for them either. So a4. And here I went knight d5. Okay. Engine suggesting other moves too. Bishop g6, queen d7, queen d5. This seemed pretty logical though. And my whole idea was to use this b4 square, possibly c3 if allowed, but more realistically the b4 square. Okay, so bishop b2, knight c4 might be interesting as well, but bishop b2. All right, interesting. Knight b4 gets the question mark. Again, I don't know how much to read into this, though, because it is in the top three moves here. Likes bishop g6. Maybe bishop g6 so that you don't get hit when knight d4 is played. I definitely should have noticed knight d4. Like, that was a miss on my part. I did not play a perfect game here by any means. Um... I know some viewers may think, oh, like John's just beating up on these low-rated players, like just flexing. He's not having to spend any effort. But trust me, I'm trying in these games, and you know this is instructional stuff. I want to get better in my own chess too, and I hope to help you guys along the way. So, you know, I'm not taking it for granted that um, I missed knight d4. Like I'm not happy with myself because that should have been on my radar. That's a great move by Loki. So. Yeah, if this, let's see what happens if rook c1 for a second, because I wasn't sure. I was going to play this, and then if the rook goes to a1 or b1, let's say rook a1, just repeat the position. But it's like, then what? What do I do at this point? h6, bishop g6. Yeah, it's suggesting some repetitions in this line. I don't know. This would have been tough. Like, what about queen d5, as I was mentioning? Looks reasonable. Black sitting on a quarter pawn advantage, maybe? But this is very much a game, folks. I just think mainly white's problem is they can't move the knight for fear of uh, running into bishop takes c2 in some capacity. I guess even right away I can do this because if rook takes, I take on d1 and then scoop this. But yeah, that would have been interesting if how the game would have continued after rook c1. But this too was interesting. Knight d4, bishop g6, and let's see, moment of truth. So c3, best move for white, and it's evidently... Dead equal, according to the engine. <laughs> C3. Okay, so does knight d3 not work? I was getting really confused by this right after the game. This. Oh, in this variation, knight c6. Yeah, I think I did mention this, right? And then hit here. Wow. 
Because currently white is down a piece, but I have two pieces under fire. I can play bishop g5, but then take here. Wow, bishop c2, rook d to c1. Bishop can move away. Rook a2, defend again. Yeah, so that, that was critical. c3, knight d3 leading to these complications. And if c5, I had briefly looked at this. What's the evaluation here? b5. Okay, didn't think about b5. I thought if capture on a5, rook takes a5, and I'm fine. I like this. Rook maybe can come here or also attacks the pawn. I thought maybe knight c4, rook d5. This, I mentioned this line in the game, competing past pawns. Looks like black is slightly favored here. But uh, b5, kind of a strategic move. Keeps this weak. Yeah, very interesting. And then it wants me to play c6, try to sack a pawn and open things up. So there were some subtleties here after knight d4, especially had white gone for that c3 move. I won't go too deep with that, guys, but if you want to explore that, go ahead. Instead, knight on d2 to f3. Yeah, and white played that not immediately, but um, after some thought, and that proved to be pretty costly. c5, and white's caught when they're in a position unable to defend because. Yeah, I think now of c3, I was, I was pretty keen to play knight d3. Yeah, maybe this isn't so bad for white. Interesting, because if take here, queen d2, wow. Queen d2 is playable, because if here, take there with check. Wow. Yeah, some intriguing possibilities here, folks. Tactical stuff. So even after knight 2 to f3, uh, c5, c3 leads to some, some complications that are tough for a human. There's also take here, but then white takes here. Could play this position as well. Probably somewhat favorable for black with the two bishops occupying nice diagonals. Yeah, feel free to play around with those lines if you want. I'll post the link to the game in the description. But instead, white plays knight b5. I took on c2. I was kind of expecting queen takes d8. I probably would have taken with the f rook. I'm up a pawn here. I'm threatening this. If knight takes c7, rook c8, hit the knight, try to scoop b3. This looks like a technically winning position for black. Up the two pawns. Um, or sorry, just one pawn, I guess. But good position to work with. Knight d3 maybe coming, c4. Yeah, so only up the one pawn, but minus two, two and a half. Instead, white stepped to e2 and ran into the bishop d3 move with the skewer. And I'm going to win the exchange. So white resigned. A little early, but yeah, this is, this is losing. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, hopefully you guys picked up a few things in the Alakine's defense. Thanks for the suggestion on that. I will try to work in other openings, like the Catalan was one highly upvoted suggestion. Uh, the Karokan, also the Semislav. I know you guys like those lines too, so I'll try to play them. And let me know if you guys have any questions or comments on this game. Let me know if you play this opening too. I'd be curious. So thanks again, everyone. This was a Climbing the Rating Ladder video. Thanks to Loki for the game. I'll see you guys again soon.